travel through 300 years of ceramic art and studio glass. This collection of over 13,000 has it all, from the elegant to the impressive and the whimsical. This is Chef Vidya. This is also Epidemiologist Vidya. She shares her expertise from the perspective of a chef epidemiologist. Plus, I'll tell you about avocados, Dr. Claudia will talk to you about talking to yourself, and of course, an update on the coronavirus pandemic today on SoFlo Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie. Today we are spending the day at the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts. It's one of the most impressive collections of ceramic art and studio glass in the world. We're gonna see over 200 years of Wedgwood, Royal Dalton, and Yadro, as well as some local artists and so much more. But first, we have to get to our COVID update. Phase three, here we are. Just a few weeks after we went to phase two here in South Florida, phase three is now in effect for all of Florida. What does that mean for us? Not a whole lot. The major changes are lowered restrictions, including nightclubs being able to open, bars, and lower restrictions for all businesses. However, Miami-Dade, Broward, and Monroe counties have decided to pretty much stick to the same ones they already had in place. Each county is still assessing what to do moving forward. I'd like to give you a clearer update, but the fact is everything's changing so rapidly that by the time you actually see this, it'll be different. Here's what I can say, you already know what to do. More and more states, counties, businesses, and the like will be opening up. You don't have to like it yourself, but it is happening. And experts agree from the CDC, SIDRAP, NIH, and other acronymic organizations that cases will probably rise. Shocking. However, this is part of the process, and the trick is to continue to be mindful of ourselves and others. Everyone has a different level of comfort when it comes to going back to normal, but the measures to slow the spread are the same. As a quick reminder, here is an explanation of how COVID spreads according to the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy that we showed you a few weeks back. Person A is expelling aerosols by talking, breathing, etc. Person B receives droplet spray and inhales particles. Person C, who is socially distanced, has no exposure. Some time passes, and person A's particles disperse with larger droplets settling on the ground. Person B is still exposed, but less exposed than when person A was expelling. As more time passes, more large droplets settle and inhalable particles continue to dissipate. Person B is still exposed. Person C is now slightly exposed. Social distancing is the number one thing that you can do to slow the spread, along with limiting your time, especially indoors, around other people. The next best thing that you can do is to wear a mask, but wearing a mask is not a superpower that suddenly makes you impervious to being infectious or infected. It works best when used indoors, especially coupled with social distancing, not instead of. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds for the rest of your life and continue to stay informed. This too shall pass, but for now, we too shall mask. Back to the fun stuff. When we got started here at the museum, we were really unsure as where to, we should start. And then we realized that this museum is so amazing and the exhibits are so amazing that it doesn't matter where we start. Take this next to me, the Art of Fire exhibition that showcases Dave Shuluy's large glass flowers. A while back at Hollywood Hot Glass, I struggled making a tiny glass tumbler and seeing the size of these just, wow. Welcome to Dia Sunset Harbor. We are joined by Vidya. She is the executive chef and chef epidemiologist. And that's because you're actually an epidemiologist, correct? That's right. All right, well, we're nice and spaced apart here. So let's take our masks off, have a quick conversation about it. You're an epidemiologist. First of all, what is that? As an epidemiologist, you study the spread of diseases and how cross-contamination you know, may occur um, among viruses and bacteria and so on. So I use that really in the kitchen to make sure that everything is sanitized using CDC grade level sanitizers. We have implemented QR codes, hand sanitizers throughout the restaurant. We do have um, foot pedals to open the door so you, you don't have to use your hands. I, as a research scientist, also um, educate our staff on how to build your immunity based on scientific publications, you know, increasing vitamin C, D, zinc, selenium, multivitamins, you know, just basic right. vitamins to build your immunity because you are in the public 
um, every day, you know. Yeah. So you, you you really don't know what you're going to be coming across. So definitely building immunity is one of the big things that here I try to teach our staff. Sure. And then a little thing called the pandemic came along. Uh, how did that affect you? As a new restaurant, we were really looking forward to, you know, getting our name out there and um, showing our new concept for food. One of the unfortunate part of it also is we had to let go a lot of staff. We sort of missed that. We we had a nice little family going here, sure. and now we're trying to rebuild. And we're we have a lot of support from our community, which we really, really, truly appreciate. Yeah, and you mentioned you know the vitamin C, the selenium, the zinc, the vitamin D, um, and a lot of those can come from food. And exactly. That's a great tie-in for your restaurant. So, exactly. are there specific dishes that you've added since then? We use a lot of wholesome food here. Everything is freshly made. A lot of vegetables are fresh. All our food, our masalas, are made in-house. Our samosas, they're made in-house. It takes two days right. <laughs> to make some of these. A lot of manpower, sure. but what you're getting is not something frozen from big wholesaler. It's sure. made in-house. The doughs are made in-house. Everything right. is made in-house. So, what you're getting is fresh. Fresh, good food. Next week, stop by because we'll take a bite of some of this. In fact, I take a bite of a lot of the food because video wouldn't let me come here unless <laughs> I tasted everything. And I even try some hot sauce that's really hot. So you'll see it then. Is there anything else you'd like everybody to know? Definitely keep wearing your mask. This is the only way we're going to conquer this disease. Mask up, and we'll see you next week. Pony up for some more Soul Flow Health. We talk about avocados, we talk to Dr. Claudia Caprio about talking to yourselves, and we show you a workout you can do anywhere, plus more of the Wiener Museum of Decorative Art when we come back. Giddy up, where are we going? Focusing on you, from your team of experts at Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center, South Florida's only National Cancer Institute designated cancer center. In 2018, Jackie Bennett was the first Sylvester patient in a clinical trial for an experimental vaccine to prevent the recurrence of triple negative breast cancer, which is more aggressive and has a lower survival rate than other types of breast cancer. This may not save my life, but I'm hoping it'll save someone. In the past two years, Jackie has traveled with her wife, returning to work full time, and her breast cancer has not come back. I feel great mentally as, as well as physically. Dr. Carmen Kalfa runs the folate receptor vaccine clinical trial at Sylvester. It's designed to stimulate an immune response. That is specific to that folate receptor on these triple negative breast cancer cells. We're hoping that the immune system is trained to recognize those cells and hopefully get rid of them. Neither Dr. Kalfa nor Jackie knows if she is getting the actual vaccine or a placebo, but two years later, they are hopeful. If you feel good and you have no new symptoms and you don't have any new physical findings, then you're likely to be in remission, and that's the case with Jackie. I knew that I wanted to do more than just survive cancer. I wanted to help to advance cancer treatments. Fortunately, places are beginning to open back up, but one of the things that you should still do during the pandemic, after the pandemic, and just for the rest of your life, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Simply get them wet, add some soap, turn off your water, and this is the fun part. We stay here for about 20 seconds. So make sure you get fingertips, tops of your hands, rinse them off, and keep watching Soap Low Health. The Art of Tea exhibit celebrates over 300 years of the art of drinking tea. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and today we're at the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts, a massive, gorgeous collection of decorative arts like these tea sets behind me and this teacup in my hand. Just this exhibit alone is worth a trip. You may know me as the host of SoFlow Health, but today I'm also the produce professor. Ah yes, the avocado, our topic of discussion for today. About two years ago, we told you right here on SoFlow Health that Time Magazine reported Americans spending upwards of $900,000 a month on avocado toast alone. Try this one on for size. 1,493,469,289 Haas avocados have been sold this year as of July 12th, according to the Haas Avocado Board. What makes the avocado so special? Let's start with the fact that this fruit 
Yes, fruit is unlike most fruits because it's lower in carbohydrates and higher in fats. Don't let the 1980s low fat craze deter you. This fat is good for you. Avocados are high in unsaturated fat, which is the good kind. Particularly, it's high in monounsaturated fat, which Harvard Health reports when replacing saturated fat with monounsaturated fat, say from an avocado, it will help lower LDL or bad cholesterol. Now, let's guac and talk. Here we will be making a single serving of basic guacamole, and all you'll need is one Haas avocado, some lime juice, salt, pepper, maybe dried cilantro, or a red pepper flake if you want to kick it up a notch, and of course a knife to cut your avocado with, a fork to scoop it out and smash, and a bowl. Open your avocado, remove the pit. I like to cut it up inside the skin, but be careful with your knife. Then scoop it out with a fork and use that fork to mash up the avocado. You can use a pestle and mortar if you're fancy. While I put fork to fruit, it's probably a pretty good time to tell you that avocados actually are a great source of fiber. In fact, the average Haas avocado has about 10 grams of fiber according to the USDA. They're also a great source of vitamin K, potassium, and folate. Once you've Hulk smashed this a decent amount, add a little salt, pepper, and some cilantro. Mix those up a bit and add a little bit of lime juice to taste. If you don't have fresh limes, lime juice in a jar is a great substitute. Now, feel free to add to this base whatever else you like. Maybe some chopped onion, tomato, anything you like. In this case, I'm gonna use some red pepper flake for a little spice. Once you've mixed that in, grab a tortilla chip that's healthy, maybe like one of these cassava chips, some chopped vegetables, or use it as a topping on some avocado toast per se. Now, you're not just here for the health, you're here for the taste. Delicious. Avocado oil is also a great substitute for other oils. You can use it on a salad, add a splash to a smoothie for some healthy added fat, or use it to cook with because it's also a high heat oil. There you have it from the produce professor. Add some guac to your gullet and enjoy. How about this for a mask? With Halloween just around the corner, we thought it would be nice to show you more of the carnival and cabaret exhibit. The fact is that over the centuries, masks like this one or costumes have been used to celebrate, well, pretty much anything you can think of. And these ceramics are made with that spirit in mind. Whether it's during a coronavirus pandemic or every day, what you say to yourself matters a whole lot. Maybe more than what you even say to others. I don't know. We're here with Dr. Claudia Caprio of CMC Therapy, and maybe she can answer that question. So, Dr. Claudia, tell me, is what I tell myself more important than what I tell other people? Oh, absolutely. Really? So, the relationship that you have with yourself is illustrated by how you talk to yourself. So, when we're having negative self-talk mm -hmm. or positive self-talk, it really shows us what relationship we have with ourselves. So, I know a lot of people, particularly, that go to the gym, and they like to kind of like trash talk themselves into like being motivated or like, come on, like, you can lift more than that, like, oh, why are you so weak, like that kind of thing. Right. Is that healthy? Uh, I wouldn't say so. It, <laughs> okay. it may have those instant results to get you sure. to pick up more weight, but in the end, it's not the best thing for your, your relationship to yourself, right? So when, when I talk about the relationship to the self, that's really showing us, again, the thoughts that we have. So what we say out loud is what we're thinking internally, and it feeds it. So if okay. we say something like, oh, um, oh, I'm late for work, and now I'm going to have an awful day. Yeah the day will follow just like that because your yeah. actions and your thoughts and everything will lead like that. But if you yes. say, oh, I'm late for work, but you know what? I'm gonna cut my lunch yeah. break short and therefore I'm gonna have a great day. Mm -hmm. um, then you can really change things up. What about the opposite? Are there people that like pump themselves up too much or they're like delusional because they're like, oh, nothing, I'm fine in school, it's great, everything's wonderful. Well, I would say that's denial, right? Okay, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's going, true, yeah. That's going into a place of denial. But I think positive self-talk is really being your yeah. own best friend, your cheerleader, your mm -hmm. your biggest fan, your supporter. And I think that can be really beautiful. If you're, going, Especially right now, we're going through some hard times, we're mm -hmm. going through some challenges. And so, yeah, if you need a cheerleader on your side, be it for yourself. Yeah. Would you say that the words that you use on a daily basis are important? Very much so. It really, it really um, aligns us with mm -hmm. how we're going to feel. It shows us, you know, just what kind of day we want. So if we wake up and we say something like, you know, you could, but it's it's not even about 
getting to this place of toxic posi positivity, right? So we'll That's say that. That's what I was that. trying to get at earlier. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So toxic positivity is like when you're like, this is going to be the best day ever. Like, yeah, you know, and, <laughs> and just like going overboard. Like, yeah. so that's what you mean, right? And I think that's really important to be honest with yourself. So you can say, you know what? This is a really hard time in the world. Yeah. But for me, I'm going to do everything in my power to have a great day. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to talk myself into closing this up. <laughs> and I hope that you're listening to the thoughts that you are thinking and the words that you're saying to yourself when no one else is around and giving them consideration. Because right now, we could all use a little dose of positivity. Stay close, there's more beautiful pieces to see like this 22 karat gold embellished Diana vase, Diana the Huntress, by the way. Uh, Huntress, Hunter, anyway. We've got a workout for you and so much more. Come back. Welcome back to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and we're still here at the Wiener Museum of Decorative Art. And I'm now joined by Louise. She's the director and curator of the museum. And Louise is just telling me we have some local artists here as well. Tell us about it. Yes, we do. We're here in our hot glass gallery, which celebrates the work of the great American studio glass artists, pioneers like Dale Chihuly, William Morris, and more recently, somebody who's here in our own backyard, uh, Rob Stern Art Glass in Miami, Florida. So he has done this wonderful installation, his constellation of wind stars. Yeah. Beautiful pieces of glass art. They are absolutely beautiful. Now, earlier, we actually took a moment with Louise and spoke to her in one of her favorite areas of the museum. Take a look. This is one of the most popular galleries in our museum. It represents Ardmore from South Africa. Ardmore is a wonderful ceramic art studio in KwaZulu-Natal, a very remote part of South Africa. And it's a wonderful feel-good success story because the studio, which started 35 years ago, employs local people. And the founder, Faye Halstead, has taught them how to paint and sculpt ceramic art. Each piece that you see here is unique, one of a kind, and the whole story really makes people sort of smile and uplifting. In fact, the whole community has been uplifted because of the ceramic art that they're creating in this remote region of South Africa. The museum really celebrates the fired arts of ceramics and glass, so we focus on anything that's made of clay, and we start back in the 1800s with beautiful pieces made by companies like Wedgwood and Royal Dalton. Then we also have a fantastic glass gallery where we celebrate the work of Dale Chihuly and many of his contemporaries and followers, and we love to look at everything beautiful that has been made in glass. Art is so uplifting, particularly in these challenging times, and to be surrounded by beauty and to admire craftsmanship and art and see how talented people all over the world have created these beautiful objects. We want them to feel that experience, that joyous experience as they walk around here. No collection in South Florida would be complete without a little bit of Art Deco here in the Art Nouveau and Art Deco exhibit. You might see some of the design that is inspired by geometric shapes and you might recognize it from Miami Beach. And as we head this direction, we step back in time a little bit to Art Nouveau. While SoFlow begins tomorrow, it's a free wellness event brought to us by Mind Body Social, who you've seen in the past. Last week, we did some meditation at Blue Space, and this week, we're moving on Fort Lauderdale Beach. So, now that I'm nice and socially distant from our guest today, Martin, what do you have in store for everybody on Thursday? So, on Thursday, we're going to be putting together a body weight workout for you guys with a lot of movement. I'm going to be focusing a little bit on animal flow, calisthenics. Yes. I'll be showing you a few of these movements right now. So very quickly, we're gonna get on the ground. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna load the beast. You're gonna bring your hips back a little bit. Okay. And what I want you to do is shoot forward low, and you're gonna come low. back into a push-up. Two push-ups. Yeah. Then you're gonna bring it back. Now you're gonna shoot your hips fur really back. Good. Start shooting your shoulders forward, 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 forward. Bring your hips down. Push up. Bring your shoulders up. Push back, 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 back. Come okay. up here. You're gonna bring that right foot. Right foot. Forward. You're gonna come up here and kick through. And you're gonna be working on stability, mobility, flexibility. You're gonna bring it back. Good. Now we're gonna bring up the other Left side. Left hand. Yep. Good. Ooh. Now we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna bring up the hips again. Okay. Stay on your toes. Uh -huh. And you're gonna go down into the ground and then press back up. Good. Bring down the knees. And that's it. 
Woo. We're working on a little bit of stability, mobility, flexibility, yeah. strength with the shoulder press. So that's nice. You incorporate the yeah, whole body. I'm, I'm breathing a little extra <laughs> here. And I got to say, doing it on the beach is even more of a bit of a challenge because the ground's moving a little bit beneath you. I think we should hit the round one more time. Let's do it. And uh, just make sure everybody got it good. All right, so. let's do it. So, beast hold. Good, now you're gonna load it back. You're gonna bring the hips up. Start pushing forward. Bring that right leg forward. Good, and now kick through. Good, you're gonna hold it. Now I want you to do a quick hop back. Good, now go forward. Good, press up. Bring it back down back now let's bring the hips up and let's do the shoulder press you're gonna lean forward press up bring the knees down and that's it Woo. so tell us real quick <laughs> i can feel the benefits but what are the benefits of doing movements like this so when you're doing movements like this you're incorporating your entire body so you're working on stability through your shoulders through your hips mobility flexibility you're working a little bit on that cardio right yeah uh, and you are going to be gaining strength you're gaining a little bit of hypertrophy, so a little bit of muscle you're going to be putting on. So right. it's a little bit of everything. You're incorporating right. everything into it. 6.30 p.m., get your pre-dinner or post-dinner workout, depending on your, your <laughs> eating situation, in with Martin. Martin, thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me. I'm just going to enjoy the view, and maybe we'll hit a few more in a sec. Let's do it. I need a minute, though. <laughs> we'll do it. A little known fact about ED is that your diet and lifestyle actually have a lot to do with it. And we have Andrew of North Beach Medical Clinic here to verify that. Andrew, is that true? If you think about erectile dysfunction, this is a blood flow problem. As we age and as we eat, blood vessels can become hardened up. We lose circulation, maybe not just in this part of the body, but everywhere, our legs and our hands, and certainly all of this can contribute to erectile yeah. dysfunction. There's a lot of people out there that might think, oh, well, I don't want to have to take some pill or something like that. Uh, but fortunately, you have a different solution, correct? We do. North Beach Medical Clinic uses the most advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, clinically shown to open up blood vessels and improve exactly what we're talking about. Blood flow, blood flow. That's a process called neovascularization. So mm -hmm. what it does is it restores normal spontaneity and function in the bedroom, no pills, no injections, no surgery. Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and this is Merlin. Today we're finishing our episode kind of where it all began because Mr. Wiener first acquired Merlin in his collection. He began it all, it's a Royal Dalton piece, and then that led to all of this Royal Dalton in the room here. And then that all eventually led to the rest of the Wiener Museum of Decorative Arts, which you can see if you'd like to support your local museums, come and take a look for yourself. We only saw just a sneak peek of what there really is to see here. And as always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com. You can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And until next week, it's goodbye and good health. I'm going to go put Merlin back where I got him so I don't break him. Next week on SoFlow Health, we'll taste the food of Dia Sunset Harbor with our new chef epidemiologist friend. And we'll show you a free dockside yoga class you can take throughout the week. We'll also visit a mobility assistance provider and update you on the latest regarding COVID-19. Be safe. I'll see you then. <laughs>